Bruce, I like the way you think. I like the way you think. What am, what am I saying? What does that mean? I like the way you think. I mean it. What am I actually saying? What, uh, and I want to say that everything that Sadviji said, I, I don't want to repeat it because I would say exactly the same thing she said, so I'm going to just make an addition to the thinking part. Mind, brain, body. Before I even go to that level, let me just tell you, because I work with cells my whole life, the most primitive organism on the planet are bacteria and cells like amoeba. Everyone knows amoeba. I go, an amoeba has all of the functions that you have. An amoeba has a respiration, digestion, nervous system, reproduction system. An amoeba even has an immune system. So single cells are like miniature people. And in the world of an amoeba, the amoeba has to live in the world. It has to read what's going on. Is this a good place to go? Is there food here? Or is there something scary? So the amoeba doesn't bounce. It moves in the direction to give life. So it has to read the environment and adjust the biology. Now, everyone thinks, well, cells, how can a cell be so smart? You know, they're so small. Everything less than human is less smart. And I go, stop. <laughs> cells created us. We were made by the intelligence of cells. And so when you look at your body and you say, oh, I am Bruce one thing, and I go, that is an illusion. Every one of us is made out of about 50 trillion cells. A human body is a community of cells. And I said, well, when they live in a community, where should the community go? Well, here's the issue. Uh, let's talk about a liver cell in your body right now. If the cells are going to adjust to the environment, what environment does your liver cell see? Does it see where we're sitting right here? No. It's inside. How does it know what's going on? The community of cells create the nervous system. The nervous system is to read the big environment and then send the signals to the cells to tell them what to do. So the reality is your cells do not see the real environment we're living in. They see your interpretation, your thought about that environment. Is this a safe environment? Then 50 trillion cells say, good, I'm very happy, I'm in a very safe environment. But if you have a picture of fear, then you're sending a signal to the cells to get ready for protection and get ready for fight or flight. So the function of the mind, brain, uh, body in the other level than what Sadviji has just said is how do I coordinate the community of my cells? Should my cells be healthy? Should they be afraid? Should they be in love? Why? Because their expression is our expression. So if I send them messages of fear and concern, then they are like inside getting very nervous about what to do. And fear and love are the opposite behaviors in a cell. Love, open, take in the love and bring it in and grow. Love is a nutrient. Fear, shut down, close off, get in protection. And I say, well, you can't be in love and in fear at the same time because love is open and fear is closed. So our mind, brain, body relationship, in addition to all the wonderful spiritual aspects that Sadviji is talking about, has a mechanical role. What should my cells be doing? They cannot see what's going on, but they're going to have to move the community from here to there, and so they need to organize their behavior to make my behavior. So all of a sudden, your thoughts are not just contained in your head. Your thoughts are changed by the brain into information that then goes to 50 trillion cells and tells them what's going on. And the problem in our world today is fear. Will I have enough? Will I have food? Will I have health care? Am I safe in my world? And I say, this closes the cells down because fear means protect yourself. But you cannot live in a closed world. You have to take in nutrients. You have to take in love. You have to take in these things. 
And so the biggest problem on the planet today, 90% of health issues are, are not because there's anything physically wrong. It's because the signals that we are sending to the cells are not supporting growth, happiness, and health. And all of a sudden it says, oh my goodness, then the mind and the brain are profoundly important because they determine everything below your head, what's going to happen. And when you live in the world of watching the news, being on the internet, reading a paper, and everyone wants to tell you, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, that is what has caused the healthcare crisis on this planet. And when you can let go of those messages, then you can send messages of love, health, and harmony. And I know this in my own life, because as I said, once I started to recognize, why, why should I be afraid? I'm creating. If I'm going to create, then why would I create their story? I want to create my story. And that means we have to have control over the mind. Control over the mind? Here you are. Yoga is control over your mind. Don't let your mind run away with other people's stories. You have to create your own. You, we have to let go of the belief that other people tell us this is a scary world, a threatening world. It is only scary when we believe it is scary. You change your belief, you change your life. And when you're here, you say, how do I change my belief? The first thing is control the mind because the mind is sending the signals to the body and that controls our genes. So there is no cancer gene. There is absolutely not one gene that causes cancer. Cancer is an expression of anger and fear. If you lose the anger and you lose the fear, you are free to be healthy. And if you haven't heard or read the book by my dear friend, our dear friend, Anita Morjani. Her book is called Dying to Be Me. She had four years of cancer. In her last week, her body let go of the control. They put her on machines to breathe and to circulate her blood, and she was on a machine. And on the end of that week, she was so thin, the cancer lumps were sticking out of her body. And she went into a coma, unconscious. And the doctor called the family and said, the doctor, the oncologist said, she, this is the last stage she's about to die, so come to the hospital. In that coma, Anita had an out-of-body experience. She left the body. She took her consciousness back to the source. And she resolved the anger and the fear that she had because of her family issues. Her father, she thought she had lo lost the love of her father. And when she saw her father in that realm, that spiritual realm, he said, no, no, you're always my love and, and all that. Uh, and then there was an interesting moment as people have out of body. The, she was given a choice. Do you want to stay here or do you want to go back to your body? Well, where she was was beautiful and heavenly and peaceful and it was the most wonderful experience she had after four years of cancer. It was like, oh! But she saw her husband, Danny. She saw her crumpled up body and that he was holding her hand. And she said, if I don't go back, Danny will get sick. And she said, I will go back into that body. But you know what the most exciting thing was? The issues that caused the cancer were spiritual conscious issues. And when she resolved that, and she came back in the body and woke up, she came back to full life. The machines were no longer necessary. She was living on her own. And within a few days, the lumps of cancer disappeared. Within three weeks, the doctors were saying, where's the cancer? And they were kept looking in her body to find the cancer. And Anita says, I do not have cancer anymore. And all of a sudden, at some point, they realized there was no cancer in her body. Why did I bring her up? She is what I call the poster child of biology of belief. Here's a person on her last day of life changed her mind. And the moment she changed her mind, her biology, her health came right back to full health. 
There was no cancer left in her body. The doctors were like, there's got to be cancer. And she said, there is no cancer in my body anymore. And to me, please understand, I don't care how sick you are. If you can go to the last day and be on a machine and have no life left in you and then change your mind, you can come back in full health in that one experience. So your mind is controlling this biology. And when you take back your mind, your love, let go of the fear, you are the master of this wonderful machine, the human body. Understanding the machine, understanding. Again, I leave to the same conclusion. Understanding the machine and understanding how to control the machine, one word, yoga. Thank you. Thank you so much.